Hi, Internet. My name is Todd. Um, I'm going to be the DM for our Dungeons & Dragons game. I'm super excited. I hope you're excited. Let's get some more funky music. This is Kai Angle. Great music. But let's get some punk pump-up music, because I want to get pumped for this game. Because I've been... Dude, I've been jonesing. Just jonesing to play. Let's get some other people on here with me, though. So, uh, I think this button does things. Oh, it did things. So, we've got some people. Let's meet them and say hello. All right. You guys are live. Welcome to the stream. Are you there? Hello. 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 It feels like we've been gone a long time. We have been. It's been an age. Um, although, first of all, I want to say uh, uh, thank you to um, Gordon and and Carl and everybody else involved uh, in our last campaign. It was a Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons campaign, uh, and it was the it was an epic thing. It was like fifty six episodes. If you want to see um, season one, <laughs> you should go check that out. I've also been uh, really fortunate to play with all you guys for some Shadow Runs, and we're gonna still do some of that. But um, but tonight's actually all about. Um, what is going on here? Uh, all about the Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to jump back into that for a little bit. So I'm excited to play again. So um, let's go around the horn and meet everybody. So how about you, Gord? Hey, Gordon. Long time player. Um, in this new campaign that we're rolling out, I'm playing a human rogue. His name is Rook. And he's got a and just an interesting backstory when it comes to how he grew up. And the current predicament that he's in. Awesome. We'll get to that pretty shortly. I'm so excited to, to kind of tease that out. I, of course, I have a little bit of a heads up, but um, I'm excited to, you know, roll that out and see where it goes. That's that's half the fun. All right. Um, and then of course, uh, actually, before we move on, Gordon, you also have something else that we need to uh, to shout to the heavens about. So uh, why don't oh, you? Oh yeah, yeah. Once in a while, we like shout out like. Gordon's game is coming out. Gordon's game's coming out. Lost ones. Um, and it's out. Um, Kickstarter backers have been getting them. I think most of them have, got, have gotten them by now. Across uh, Europe, North America, and Asia. Um, so it's it's out there. It's And then eventually it'll be released uh, more fully with retailers. Yeah, that is amazing. So congratulations on that. And we'll, I'm, I've already... Paid in for the box, so I'm waiting for it to arrive, uh, and I'm Ooh. eager to play. It sounds like a really fun game, and I, I got a s sneak teaser for some of the stories, and it, it looks like a lot of fun. So uh, uh, do let us know when it's uh, widely available so the interwebs can go and get it themselves. Well, too. All right, awesome. Uh, now, you may know him from various Shadowruns, but he is joining the classic Dungeons & Dragons world with us tonight, uh, and that is Steve. Hey, it's been it's been a while since I've played some D and uh, I thought I'd jump in on that. Bringing uh, Gex Techford, who is a uh, Goliath rogue, is uh, I'm not sure what kind of personality he's going to have yet, um, but he's essentially uh, he's essentially a, a, a cat burglar giant. That was the idea. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see what comes of that. <laughs> well, Hopefully um... some interesting things i was actually just uh reminded the other day of the the shadow run that we did where you're be playing this massive sasquatch and moving super stealthy and you guys like i think it was the two of you actually kiamar and uh oh yeah i was playing kiamar yeah Ooh, and sneaky. and super <laughs> stealthy like grabbed a dude it was um what was the name of that episode mm -hmm. i think it was hunt a good mm -hmm. good greg hunting that was it in shadow run it was our most <laughs> recent shadow run actually and so, uh, if you like Shadowrun, you like Dungeons and Dragons, you like Cyberpunk, go check that out too. And uh, yeah, always good the one before that. <laughs> and I'm, also, I'm just uh, looking forward to to Gex trying pick a lock. Just picturing that in my mind. I just tiny, like yeah. it's tiny a very thing. I don't it, know. It's, it would be like it would be like Andre the Giant, you know, retires from wrestling to become a watchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> Hunched over on the bench, yeah, just working on the watch. Yeah, I can, I can picture it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the idea. 
Awesome. And also, while we're on a slight pause, I want to shout back out to Darcy, who is uh, eventually going to join us, but can't join us today. So uh, at least I think. So thank you for watching and lurking and feel free to, uh, you know how this works. We take suggestions. So if you want to spend a plot point uh, uh, and you're joining us live on Twitch or on YouTube, there's no plot point system, but you can just make a suggestion. Uh, then you can, uh, we can try to work that into the game as best we can. And if not, I do keep a little record and I'll see if we can get it back. Same for different names. I'll be asking for uh, NPCs to pop up. Um, if you get an idea of what you want to have you know, happen to these people, just no instant death. Although it is level two, so instant death is imminent. Um, anyway, let's keep going around the horn and say hey to Carl. Carl. How's it going, guys? Introducing Tillman, Dave Tillman. Dave Tillman is a total uh, cleric, a Twilight uh, cleric. Uh, ah. But he has some, some, some pent-up um, dormant anger, if you will. Um, and we'll see if his barbarian side comes out. Oh, good. I'm glad you said that, because it was on the title card, and I was like, oh, no, I've spoiled the surprise. Um, so, absolutely, we're... Uh, he's a, uh, I just picture just this big, friendly turtle. And then you cross him. And there's this little twitch under his eye. And then... Yeah, something I work out, I'm going to work out with you, Todd, just to, to figure out what a trigger point would be for him based on, you know, the surroundings and and the environment and, you and know, the storyline. It could be oh. internal as well. I figure, imagine this scenario for a second. You're a turtle and you have an itch in your lower back. Would that not just be pure hell? Just, you could never get that itch. I don't know. Maybe that's There's just that, me. or, There's or as he thing. randomly consumes a mushroom that's on his shell, one of them, one of those mushrooms will, uh, will trigger something. I don't know. Oh, that, that kind of also works. And just remember, kids, if you, you, you know, safe space with sober friend. Anyway, nothing. Um... So we're going to dive in and I'll set the tone with the world a little bit and then we're going to dive back in. Uh, we've already done uh, session one half, if you want to check that out, um, with not these characters, but it is the same world. So let's dive in and I will introduce a brand new homebrew, at least for now, uh, campaign. And we are going to be taking a look at where this goes. Welcome to everybody for jumping in on session number one. Let's do. All right. Oh, hold on. Let me... Dream. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Welcome to session one. You have found your way. Oh, that's a shadow run note. Hold on. <laughs> My notes are here somewhere, I swear to God. All right. You're in the year 2090. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. That's, yeah. <laughs> Psych! It's a shadow run all along. All right. So, in the broad strokes, you are in a fantasy world. Um, in this particular realm, or at least in this region of it, there's uh, a series of various islands, the largest of which is almost continent sized. Um, and uh, as you kind of um, move inland, the mountainous regions rise up relatively quickly uh, from the from the coastal regions that kind of seem carved out from the uh, from the sea. Uh, the delta is not not too big. They're, they're all, the mountains are only a couple days inland from the uh, from the sea. Uh, the beautiful snow-capped mountains visible from the the oceans and also from the ocean cities that crop up. There are several cities and small dwellings dotted around the main um, coastal area, almost like a big bay. And then out at sea, you've got various, um, you've got various uh, islands and island kingdoms that might be uh, making up uh, some possible destinations should you find your way to a boat or off of one. This particular city um, is... I named it last camp, god damn it. 
Kyle. Um, I forget the name. You, uh, it started with a T. Let's call it uh, Telsford. Tellsville. Don't tell. Internet. Internet. We need a name. It starts with Tell. You can find it if you want to. But anyway, so this particular city is a. a it is a neutral city by the sea, uh, governed by a small kind of council of different interests. There are, of course, various interests from uh, from the various coastal cities, but the most prominent factions are actually two different competing factions and varied neutral states in between. The, on one side, you have the, the power of the mage towers. These dotted through different cities and different regions, these massive towers, sometimes in cities, sometimes very secluded, uh, run by these arcane masters who in their, nefer in their various ranks and, um, and machinations control large sections of this realm. Their, their influence spreading unofficially through various regions always closely allied to the regions that they, uh, to many different regions' leaderships, never directly in control, never directly implicated in many plots or uh, scenarios that might arise. To counterbalance the Mage Towers is the Inquisitor. The Inquisitors uh, are, again, a group of loose factions all allied underneath the Inquisitor uh, label the unifying factor of them is their unified hatred and opposition to the mage towers in between various neutral ground states and villages and towns these are heavily influenced by the two main factions life is in mostly peaceful at this time but there was terrible war between the mage towers and the Inquisitor types. A third, lesser known uh, faction, mostly out at sea, are the um, the dr uh, the drag um, the Dragonborn Kingdom, uh, which is let's it's basically the dr uh, I have the name somewhere. I'm sorry, uh, the Dragon um, Run domains, scattered islands, uh, also rumored up further into the interior of the mountain regions. Uh, the dragon folk, this consists of all manner of things. Now, other people are allowed in those regions, sometimes, but those who rise to prominence there all seem to share a common, a, a common goal, and that is the influence and possibly even worship of dragons themselves. They are often called the spines, down my note. Anyway, so um, in amongst all of this are various fantasy races of, you know, dwarven, elven interest, fey gates popping in and out of the many uh, unexplored forested regions of here. Um, there's gnomish types, uh, both the more tinkery kind of gnom gnomes and the forest folk, halflings and so on. There's rumors of of kingdoms lost um, and never once known of, maybe perhaps even just mythical, or perhaps just lost to time in various sections of the world. But for the average folk, you live and you laugh and you die in your own village. Very few people moving from city to city, unless you're one of these merchant types or the sailor types, or a brave adventurer type. You find yourselves as the latter. For whatever reason, you have taken it upon yourselves, either by choice or by for by being forced into the realm of a wanderer. You may have taken up uh, allegiance with other factions in the group, uh, in the game. There uh, perhaps a thieves guild, perhaps um, perhaps part of the one of these larger factions. But at this time, you find yourselves in the coastal city. It's a 
fairly large city with sections of the of the of the area having been older than others. Some sections completely ruined and abandoned. Others thriving ports. Um, there's a richer section further inland with these various towers. Not quite a mage tower, but there is rumor of a large mage tower nearby. Their influence quite strong. But this land does, this particular city does have uh, what they sometimes called the guild hall. The guild. Not a guild. That is the unofficial title of those who ally themselves with the Inquisitors. They are not shy in their presence. They, um, you, you've walked past this in town. So let's, let's start with Gordon. Rook. The streets are no shock to you. Very little surprises you here. You've been here for some time now. The section where you were most familiar with is significantly less traveled. A ruins up near the point of the uh, of the break wall. But for some time now, you've been, let's say, inhabiting the areas that would have you being uh, from a poorer stature you quickly raise the uh, suspicions of those in the richer districts so you've been finding yourself in down towards the docks down towards um, the seedier side of things you tonight find yourself outside of an inn you've been here before you actually know several people who sem uh, come here somewhat often but it is considered somewhat neutral turf so rook tonight what is it that brings you out uh from your small hovel or um your where you've been crashing anyway where do we find you, and why? I think since what happened with the undertow, mm -hmm. I am still trying to figure out what happened, and with what connections I have with the Black Swallows, just trying to understand what was that thing that was taken, and how can I get it back? One of your help my contacts, friends. one of your contacts, um, uh, a, a person by the name of, hold on, it's here, Hernisa. A person by the name of Hernisa, um, rumored to have once been a, friendly with some friends of yours, uh, is said to be at this, at this inn tonight. Um, it's been rumored that she got out and made good and might maybe have a better idea of what's going on uh, beyond the the alleyways and the uh, uh, small little thieves' guild halls and nooks and crannies that they inhabit. Okay, if she's my lead, then maybe I can... I'll try to see if I can arrange a meet with her. I don't want to just drop in on her. Mm-hmm. But um, taking a look at any scrawlings on the wall with thieves can't. Oh, any do a perception check for me. Okay, First okay. roll of the night. Perception. Okay. Woo! I am going to natural with one a knowledge of like just the past like with some thoughts swirling in my head just remembering some signs of that you know at first I'm kind of looking at things like this can't be right or maybe this is right and then I just kind of get glimpses of just more and more imagery and I'm going to modify that sure thing 
using your background. Oh, it's not so terrible. 12. All right, a 12. So as you as you run your hand over this small scratching done by a dart or a, a, a small blade, just to the right of the, the wide wooden door, there's a, a, a wooden placard of a some kind of horse uh, hanging above you and the standard kind of in uh, welcoming sounds and smells. It's a mid-level in in what would be kind of not a, at the edge of not great town. Uh, so as you run your finger down the door, you find the telltale mark and you you try to feel it, but it seems to have been rubbed pretty um, uh, pretty. Uh, it's been rubbed a lot over time, so the edges are really difficult to take in. So instead of just letting your fingers tell you as the more subtle way, you actually have to stop and like take a glance and then l- get a get down low and get a really good look at this particular symbol. Um, it's really difficult to make sense of, in part because it's so worn, but there's also this large scratch right through the middle of it. It was a symbol for um, the it's a guild friendly place. Thieves are welcome here, but it's been scratched out. And that's, that's what you get. Yep. All right. Knowing that, like, that it's kind of a bit weird and odd, I'm not going to put any countersign. Mm-hmm. So, like, what I initially thought I would do. So instead, I'm just going to enter the, the inn as if I'm a patron. Sure. Well, you kind of pull up your cloak around you. It's slightly less tattered than some of what you're wearing. And you you duck inside, and and it's a relatively boisterous night. There's there's some music playing and some some laughter, some drinks being had, but um, it's not totally full or anything. I'd probably say there's about six tables with people at them, uh, out of maybe twelve scattered throughout this main common room. Towards the back is a bar and a and a swinging kitchen door, which is actually propped open at the back. Um, you can see kind of a couple of booths on each side and then a scattering of round or rectangular tables. It, 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 almost nothing in this whole place matches. It looks like it's been cobbled together with pieces over time. And very little in it looks new. Uh, above you, pretty high ceiling, uh, probably a good 15 feet up, uh, maybe a bit more, where you get to rafters that go another 5 or 10. Uh, and in a crisscross pattern, it, 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 there's a bit of dust and kind of a smell of old ale and and um, old fires and maybe a little tinge of vomit here and there. Uh, you see these uh, chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Unlike many places in the in this region, um, magic is fairly common in this realm, and so a lot of the more up upper class areas would have glowing uh, crystals or perhaps an enchanted flame that would burn forever. Above you, you see lots of tallow wax candles on these roundish chandeliers that are able to be lowered and relit as necessary. Um, it is not a place of money, but it's homey and comfortable. Uh, you find yourself a, a spot. Well, do you want to head to the bar? Do you want to head to a booth? Actually, I, I am going to head to the bar nonchalantly. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to try to look to... Like, I'm not going to try to gaze around at the car, crowd to begin with. I want to just post up at the bar nonchalantly, get a, get a drink. Sure. And then nurse the drink. And while I'm doing that, slowly get a lay of the room. Absolutely. So you post up. Um, a woman, a half-elf woman comes up, uh, graying uh, red, sil- uh, red and silver streaks in her hair, comes up. Um, offers to get you a drink um, and uh, pours you something from the, the cheaper end of things and gives you a mug. It's unmatching with any of the other mugs, but it doesn't look like any of them match. But other than that, it's it's a decent drink for what it is. How much is it? Uh, that's going to run you um, 
She's like, all right, yeah, that'll run you. Um. She takes a second to look at you, and she's like, you can have two for a silver. Fun. And I just kind of right. like hand over a silver. Uh, two on both now, or one for later? One now, one later. For sure. She gives you the drink and uh, heads on her way. And yes, I know, Darcy, you're listening to the voice changer. You're like, no. Anyway, I'm not going to. All right. So you post up and uh, start getting the lay of the land. Okay. Coming up next. Dave. What up? Dave, what brings you to this port city? Man, I'm just a simple wanderer. I'm going from town to town, exploring the sites, meeting new people, man. So, you your wanderings have brought you across all different kinds of various uh, exciting sites. And now, you find yourself in a, one of the fabled neutral cities uh, that had been quite badly damaged during the wars but now has been rebuilt and is an exciting center. Not being directly under the influence of any of the factions has made this a bit of a, um, a cobbled together city. Um, it's got an energy of, of a place that is at once old and new. It's got, it's got deep roots and ruins even within the city itself that are beautiful, half toppled statues and old crumbling temples. Um, brand new temples, risen or restored to former prominence. You, there's so much to see here, from all the the tall peaks uh, of the uh, the mountainous regions. There's kind of two cliff faces rising up on either side, and this kind of crescent-shaped harbor is settled in between. Um, as you explore backwards, there's more beautiful gardens and terraced, rich areas. That, uh, frankly, and no offense, but um, your general appearance, um, and also turtles being fairly rare in this region, are often mistaken for dragonborn, uh, which are somewhat suspect given the various uh, machinations of the spines. Um, you sometimes get mistaken for those, but other times greeted with curiosity. In this particular region, down near the docks, yeah, exactly. very bloody. Yeah, you know, no offense to turtles or to dragonborn, but it is kind of at a glance. You have to see the shell. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in. Um, so you find yourself down by the docks in what is most notably an exciting hovel. Like it's it's a it's a hole in the wall, but that has a certain draw and energy. You can hear. Um, all this various music from some uh, musicians and bards or wannabe bards. Um, you can hear the laughter. You can hear the sounds of fighting down towards the end. Some break, breaking bottles. Uh, and you come wandering down the street. And you've, you see a humble looking tavern that you've never really seen before. Um, you, you quickly... Uh, what languages do you speak? I speak uh, Aquan, Common, and Gnomish. Nice. All right, so this actually does have some Gnomish on the title card, which is what got, grabbed your attention. Uh, there are gnomes in town, especially the more steampunky kind of... Um, there's quite a lot of, of large um, blending of arcane and science. And you, you look up and you actually see uh, this... The part of this sign is in Gnomish, and it's, um, the common part says, the wild buck. But the full name is, um, it says, the harbinger's hollow, wi the wild buck. Huh. Well, man, this looks like a great place amongst all the tall buildings. 
yeah, the, there's this one stands out in that it's separate. There are connected row houses uh, throughout most of this section with little alleys ducking off and in, honeycombing around. Uh, most of the buildings here are at least four stories. This one is a humble uh, three-story self uh, freestanding inn. Okay. Well, I am a little thirsty. All right. Well, this seems like the right place. Uh, you kind of duck inside, and you see the aforementioned several tables, humble, but not mixed-matched, but it's got a homey feel to it. You kind of quickly glance around the room. Can I get you to do a perception check for me? Oh, uh, cool. And yes, folks, I'm having the meat in a tavern. It's what I do. Actually, I, haven't, I had another one, but we'll get to that later. Really? That's all I got? And hey, that it's is... One st- it's one above the Gordon. It's a two plus four for a total of six. So you take in the place, and you're just like, huh. And there's some candle wax comes dripping down on your shell, and you're like, hmm. Um, uh, the... the innkeeper at the far end kind of um a half elf woman with reddish hair um kind of smiles up at you and you take a read on the room and yeah there's no i mean it's almost all humans in here a couple dwarves a half elf um yeah that it's a pretty unmixed crowd right now but they all seem relatively happy to see someone walk in so what do you want to do Uh well, I got my uh, haversack hanging from uh, my halberd like a, a true vagrant. But uh, <laughs> looking for something, you know, booth-like that's, uh, that could accommodate the shell, obviously. Oh, of course. So booth? So you go scooting over there and, and kind of look around, hands steepled on the table waiting for service. And uh, after a few minutes, uh, the half-elf woman comes over. And uh, and men- and and greets you. Hi, I'm Tim. Uh, welcome to the Wild Buck. What can I get you? Ah, uh, this is the eternal question. I would like uh, a nail, please. You got it. Any preference, or should I just pour whatever's closest? Bartender surprise. I like to live dangerously. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, not too dangerous, but uh, you're welcome here at the buck. So she goes off and, and grabs you a, uh, uh, a a pretty big stein and comes back, and uh, it's going to run you um, a silver for the for the drinks. All right, hand over silver and give her a silver as a tip. Oh, much appreciated. Thank you. No you need anything, problem. you let me know. I will. All right, so she heads back, and, and it's a pretty busy place, and it seems like she's alone out here. Um, although there is probably... You can you can hear some clanging in the back. There's probably somebody in the kitchen working away back there. Um, nothing really standing out until... Until um, you see somebody come on in. <clears throat> it is... A good night for you. So, Gex, I want you to do a sleight of hand check for me, please. Sleight of hand check. <clears throat> Let me click the button. How's the how's the twenty three do? Is that good? That's real good. All right, so you've got a coin purse in your hand that was on a noble that just walked by. You kind of just pretended to be carrying a box and just whoosh, grabbed it as they just got a little too close. You kind of bumped into them a little bit. Oh. <clears throat> um, it you make it most of the way, like most of the way down the street before you the urge to count it kind of takes over, and you just quickly <laughs> kind of pop it open and look inside. It looks like it's pretty full of silver, actually. Um, mm. it's gonna be. It's going to be, uh, yeah, that, that's probably about mm, maybe 
70, 80 silver pieces, maybe even some gold mixed in. A pretty good haul. Pretty fat purse, actually. It's, it's And you're like, it's actually got some heft to it. And that is probably what gives it away. Because you look back and you see the person suddenly, they're pretty far down at the end of the street. Uh, and it's um, a kind of a rich, richer looking man in kind of purpley velvets with like one of these kind of belts around the middle that kind of makes his tunic balloon out and makes him actually look even fatter than he is. And um, all of a sudden he goes to hike up his belt and then he realizes it's really light. And he starts looking around. What do you do? I will very quickly reach into the bag, grab as much of the silver as I can and pocket it. All right. And then just drop the bag in the mud and go that way. Nice. So you go, you quickly transfer it, stuff it into one of your own pouches and take a right okay. and, and you walk almost face first into a troop of guards. There's like four guards all in the, the city's kind of tabards over top of chain mail. Uh, they're, they're conish helmets with the nose guard. Um, two of them carrying spears, two of them carrying short swords um, and slung crossbows. As they as you come around the corner, still carrying this small empty box that you're, I'm assuming empty. Um, actually, no, it's got something in it. Internet? What's in the box? What's in the box? Um, so you, in your quick turn, almost nose to nose with the front two. Just kind of like try to, yeah, huh, gentlemen, huh, you know, step around him. Oh, out of the way. Yep, by all means. So they kind of walk about 15 more feet and kind of pause at that corner where you turned. And you can hear a slight, hey, hey, go, go. <laughs> Coming from Just around trying, the corner. Uh, so I'll look for some more alleyway some more turns to take to sure so you you kind of look around and and usually this city has a, a lot of little honeycomb places between but you just happen by fluke to be kind of away from that you're not near the standard row houses uh at this particular section but there is a small three-story tavern by the look of it not like just 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 off to your right uh, I'll try and, like, come in from... Yeah, I'll kind of come or circle around it and see if I can come in not the main entrance. Sure. Even if so I have can... to go through the kitchen. <laughs> Absolutely. So you take... you The main entrance is just ahead and to your right, but you kind of cut a hard right and around uh, towards the back, kind of carrying your box like you're supposed to be carrying it. And there's a little alley sandwiched in between a couple of trees and uh, a small uh, alleyway. And then the beginning of the row houses. Um, and you kind of go walking there for a little while. And there's a small fence. And it's on most people, it would be a medium sized fence, but it's, you know, you know nipple height for you. Uh, and you're just carrying, so you can see over very clearly. And you can see the back of this inn after a little while. There's a small courtyard, uh, small stables at the back, uh, and a well. And you see uh, uh, somebody in kind of a white apron y kind of thing, a little bit stained. Um, just kind of standing there smoking a pipe just off the back stoop of this little inn. Uh, the alleyway looks like it it kind of brushes up against kind of a, uh, a, a the back of another building at this point, so you can't keep going straight. What do you want to do? Uh, yeah, I'll go towards the guy, the, the obvious kitchen hand having a cigarette, and... Uh... Uh, smoking a pipe, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, smoking a pipe. And, uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll offer him, a, like, a small coin. It's like, hey, you got you got any of that to spare? You... he He's an older human, kind of balding, and, and um... Uh, you, you know, he's he's a, a little bit worse for wear and seems more skittish than your average uh, human that you've run into. So as soon as you kind of clear your throat, he looks up like, and he looks where he expects to meet your eye, but it's pretty much your, you know, midsection. And then he just keeps tracking up, over, like, above the fence line, up, up, up to meet your gaze. And he's just, ugh. 
Uh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, sure. Sure. Yeah. My, you're a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the first time I've heard that. I don't have an, another pipe. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. May maybe just let me, uh... I've got some tobacco. And grab a grab a table. Uh, that, that's fine. Oh. Hang on to that. Oh, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'll just kind of right. like you know. She kind of buy you there. Story yeah, he goes and I... opens the little gate, and the the fence opens up, and you kind of duck through. At which point, you glance back down the alley you came, as you see four guards and this one guy with the with the tunic, kind of pointing downwards and like patting and shaking his coin purse. And they seem to be ignoring him, or like, yes, sir, you found it. He's like, no, but it, it's not full. Uh, and you just catch that, and you're just like, whoop, back into the back, into the kitchen. And the older man's like, oh, uh, just most people come in through the front. Uh, but it's fine. Jen won't mind. Um, what, what, what is that? He points at the box. Oh, uh. This is, uh, it's, it's for, it's for keeping chickens. <laughs> he kind of, uh, okay. It's, it's, you know when a chicken, you're about to slaughter it, and, and it kind of gets agitated and confused and starts making a bunch of noise? This is my fluster cluck box. Ah, a chicken farmer. Well, come on in. Um, watch your head. And he leads you through this kitchen. It's a pretty big kitchen. Um, bigger than would normally be one cook. And there's another prep cook in there. Uh, probably a boy is like maybe maybe 14. Uh, working away, stirring a pot and chopping some stuff back there. And uh, the cook um, leads you through. Uh, and as he walks in, this half-elven woman is kind of walking into the kitchen. And they almost meet. And then she looks past him and sees you. And she's like, um, I didn't know we had a delivery. Oh, no, this is, I'm just, yeah, no. This okay. is my chicken box. All right. Um, the main room's back there. Thank you. What do you got on the menu tonight? Uh, the cook's like, oh, oh we've got a, a, an excellent soup, uh, a good stew. It's the same as the stew, but we, and the kid... The kid calls back. It's the same as the stew. We just strain it. And then and, and he's like, um, we're still waiting on a few more things, but uh, those are the main two. You want some? Uh, yeah, I'll have a bowl of that stew. And uh, whatever uh, whatever your best ale is. And the, the half-elf woman um, kind of looks at you kind of trying to judge if you're trouble or not um uh can you go ahead and do either a persuasion check or a or a deception check depending on if you think you're going to be up to trouble <laughs> I'll, I'll try you don't even have to tell me just just roll okay. one of the two yeah, yeah, eight and eight on deception i'm not really trying to be deceptive i'm just trying to be like yeah, you're trying to pass yourself off as not up to trouble. Yeah. With a pocket full of stolen silver. Um, it's mine uh, now. It's, it's possession of mine. It's the law. It's mine. Yeah. Um, I'm going to need you to pay up front. Oh, sure. How much? That's the silver for the meal and the drink. Kind of like reach up my sleeve and flick her a silver. Uh, okay, so you flick it to her, and uh, uh, she catches it like, so, like it looks like she's gonna miss, and then she's like, whoosh, she's got some reflexes on her. Um, and she kind of looks at it, and she's like, Well, then, make yourself at home. Um, uh, if you need anything else, just let me know. Oh, I chunk of bread if you got any. Of course. And the cook kind of waves you down his, uh, towards the table. And uh, then he heads back at, uh, to finish his pipe. All right, so you guys are 
Um, you see each other in the room, and whether actually, Rook, you've been sussing stuff out and keeping a very low profile. The th first thing that you notice is a very tall uh, be being walk into the through the wrong door. Um, the second thing you notice is that it is indeed um, a Goliath. And the third thing you notice is that you know him. This is Gex. You have some friends in common in the uh, less than savory guilds. Mm, yes, guild. You would, you would both know each other, at least by name, even if you don't know each other that well. Um, I, I see him, and is he coming my way, or is he moving away? Well, he comes in just at the end of the bar on the far end, where you're perched up. kitchen. Yeah, from the kitchen. And then he goes okay. and finds a, a booth off to the side. And okay. kind of shoves the table to the far side of the booth so he can fit on this side. And puts a box on the table, and kind of takes his ale after a few minutes and, and just starts looking around. He hasn't spotted you yet. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I keep a bit of an eye on him. I wait for him to catch, like, to, to spot me before, you know, and, and as soon as I notice if he sees me, then I'll kind of make eye contact with him. But otherwise, I'm looking for Harnissa to All right. see if she's in the room. Sure thing. So you haven't yet seen Harnessa. Um, you know she's a tabaxi, so she'll stand out, probably. Um, yeah. But uh, so far, you haven't seen her. But you do catch eyes with Gex. Okay. So then, you know, as soon as we kind of like, I, you know, as he's scanning, he sees me. I kind of just, just kind of make eye contact. And I try to just kind of like have the look and a quick just sign on, the, on, on uh, Thieves' Cant. Just to say, you know, is he, is he here on business or just chilling? You pick that up, no problem. Um, <laughs> what do you want to sign back? Sign. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'll sign back a bit of both. <laughs> left alone or come? Like, basically, does he want to be left alone or, or com have company? Oh, yeah, I'll, you can join. Yeah, come on over. I'll okay. wave, wave you over. So, well, so after then, a uh, long series of baseball signs with you know, crotch grabs, yeah. nipple tweaks, and yeah, pulling yeah. with the hat. You uh, all, all nondescript. Yeah, yeah, it's all very subtle. Uh, it's like it's nose subtle. picking. Hmm. Um, I'll, I'll make my way over and I'll, I'll take a seat. Absolutely. So you sit on the same side actually, because the table had to be shoved pretty far out to make room for him. He's a very big, big being. Sure. Um, sure. If it wasn't a booth, it would be easy, but yeah, it's easy enough. So you will sit down and and uh, and are chatting for a little bit. Um, after a little while, a couple of things do happen as you're kind of catching up. Uh, you both, quick back uh, bit of that is you both are members, or at least adjacent to the lo one of the local thieves' guilds. What was it called again, Gordon? Uh, the Black Sparrows. Right. So you're both uh, at least on friendly terms with the Black Sparrows, uh, which operate out of this part of the city and actually uh, have some hidey holes in the less savory er uh, and also some of the ruined areas of the city. Uh, so you guys are sitting and, and able to catch up a little bit if you want to. So fancy meeting you here. Gex? Well, yeah, I could say the same, I suppose. Um, I'm looking for a member of the Sparrows. Just, uh, well, you know what happened with the Undertow when uh, everything went south there, and, you know, uh, I've been Gex. moving around ever since then. Gex, roll a history check for me. Me too. Twenty-two. Damn. Me too. 
All right, Damn. you definitely know what happened at the, at the. Uh... Well, yeah, because oh, he does. I don't. <laughs> so you nod in acknowledgement and and keep on. Um, yeah. Now, just a point of clarification. Uh, Harnisa used to be, run with. Uh, she she used to run with someone who used to run with the Black Sparrow. That person is now dead, but um, she was on friendly terms with the Black Sparrow. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to find any of them that are left. Just because, you know, I'd done some runs with them. And frankly, I think that uh, some of the things that they were looking for might have had something to do with what happened. Hmm. What makes you say that? Well, you know, I ran with them a little bit, did some jobs, did more stuff underneath the city, looking for things, and just with some of some of the friends I made. They they're looking for some things, and I'm wondering if it, that there's a connection there. What kind of things are they looking for? Old relics. You know, like there's ruins underneath the city, right? You remember? The bunch of treasure hunters go down there. Not many necessarily come back. But it you is know me. some of the more dangerous work. I'm pretty nimble. Pretty swift. Yeah, that is true. I, I generally have a good that. eyes, so I, I took a couple of those jobs because the pay is better. And, um, well started to realize, you know, when they're when they're trying to sift through the ruins of an old civilization, some things that they dig up maybe had something to do with it. Now with 22, some of the details of what happened you've heard rumors of. But you don't have any of the, uh, uh, like, specifics. But you know that a whole bunch of people died. Or disappeared. Or just... Right. It was a weird thing. Now, it was a little before you kind of got settled in and, and you weren't in that area when it went down. But a, it was in an abandoned section, or now abandoned section, of the city. With the 22, mm. though, what you do get is Harnisa. You are familiar with her. For whatever reason, she is a tabaxi firecracker of a of a thief. She has a reputation of being some of the fastest and most both with her her claws uh, and her paws and her tongue. She is um she's a bit of a force to be reckoned with. And you knew her you met her before. She, you would know her, and also, uh, you've kept a little bit of tabs. It's like almost like somebody you went to high school with, and you're like, "Yeah, I know what they're up to still, vaguely, vaguely." And so, mm -hmm. um, you know that she's actually taken up mercenary work with a group called. Hold on. Um. Uh, Harbingers of Boon. The Harbingers of Boon. Uh, of Boon. They are, um, they've got a, at least they have a rep, whether or not she's part of it or not. But they have a reputation of being really uh, rough. Like, re really brutal. Um, and they've, they've definitely put down any kind of competition before. Um, and they're pretty damn cocky. They have a leader named Garrick. Some half-orf guy. Mm. Um, he's He came from one of the, originally from one of the uh, islands, but he's really been making a name for, from, for himself in town, uh, inland. But now he's in this town and they kind of come and go from this area. So that's what you get for 22. Even though some of the details of that weird, like, bunch of people and just a whole section of town just getting messed up. That's really all you know about um, about that. 
So right about sure. now, you guys have been chatting for a while, and then all of a sudden, um, a couple of things happen. Uh, number one, um, Tian comes over uh, with your stew, which is probably what gets most of your attention, and a big, basically half loaf of bread, and plunks it down on the table, and smiles up and says, Oh, look at that. Making friends? Always, dear. Of course. Well, let bite. me know if you want anything. Do you want a meal there? Um, you? She turns and says to Rook. You just kind of smile. I just kind of smile at her and like, I'll just have my second beer here, hon. Thanks. She, it's on me. She kind of paid. flinches back and, and she says, Sure thing, hon. She did not really appreciate being called Hun. <laughs> is what you pick up on as she walks away. She's probably in her 40s-ish. Even for a half of, she's kind of midlife. Um, so you're saying right. I'm too old for her. <laughs> How old is your she's Goliath? probably odd, because I'm like basically 21. <laughs> yeah. I'm 62. You're a 62-year-old Goliath. That's amazing. I was always, I was yeah. picturing much younger, but now, yeah, yeah he's that's... very experienced. <laughs> I love I'm just it. gonna look over at Gex and sign. I'm not gonna drink what she brings back. <laughs> um, at this point, the door almost gets kicked open. It's that like boom, in they come kind of thing, and uh, as you're both sitting there, like the whole room just the does the whole turn and look thing. And you see this really, like, you expect to see this big freaking dude who just kicked the door. And you look up, and there's this little halfling standing in the doorway who just looks um, like he's wearing these tattered gray robes and a pack with a bunch of adventuring gear. And he's kind of walking with this staff into the room. And... Uh, he just takes to the room with this grimace and this big, like, snarly face, and he just takes it all. And he looks a little like the old man from Up. Except, imagine that man with, like, runaway syphilis and a, and some kind of grayscale. Because, like, half of this guy is, is, like, mottled and, like, not rotten, but, like, Ooh, you don't want to catch what he's got. He just looks off. Like, just off. And he comes walking in. And like, dunk, dunk, dunk into the tavern. Um, and he gets a few feet in. And then a, a little behind him, this dog. This ratty old, almost wolf-sized, like, black. All torn up and scraggly and scarred. Comes padding along behind. And like slips between the guy and his quarterstaff, uh, almost knocking the little halfling off his feet. The dog is bigger than he than the halfling. And it goes walking on in and like walks right up to the bar, does a circle and plunks its butt down next to the bar. Uh do an insight check for me, somebody. A what check, sorry? Insight. Oh. Like under the two or anybody? Uh what well, might as well go. Yeah, you're in the room. You see this I'll too, do it. Dave. Yeah, Dex very suddenly apparently stopped paying attention because I got a two. <laughs> this is good. This is good stew. Stew. Fresh bread. Yeah, it's Rare. not bad. Cook knows his way. All right. Uh, Carl got the 15 and Gordon got 13. So you got over 12, so you picked this up pretty quickly. Um, your eyes... Between tracking the halfling and the and the big dog, um, you take a half second, those the two of you, uh, to clock Tien to see what she does. And you can see her kind of <sighs> sigh a little bit and almost like curse under her breath. Sana. And and you if you speak Elvish, you pick up that she swore in Elvish. Just quietly under her breath. Oh, nice. I do. Yes. Nice. So she turns around with a smile and says, um, Hold on. Hold on. Uh, do you guys want to do anything while, while, you're, while you're there? 
I'm going to watch as I'm also huh? keeping an eye out for Anissa, but I'm not going to make waves. Fair enough. All right. So uh, TN turns and with a smile and kind of the rest of the room sound kind of comes back after a little bit. Um, th they're not silenced anymore. And Tien kind of calls out towards the halfling and says, Ah, well, Turg, figured you'd show up again sometime. What can I get you? And the halfling responds, Eh, well, whatever. And a bowl. As the, as the dog, like, kind of grabs its... its uh, the the edge of his uh, robes and tugs a little, and then he uh, kind of scrambles up onto one of the one of the um, stools by the bar. Um, a few seconds later, the door, which was left open, uh, somebody starts to get up to go get it. One of the patrons, and then it gets pushed open again, and in walks this really big uh, half orc, really large, uh, wearing like chainmail. Uh, you you notice with him right away. He looks like he's been at this a while. Scars, uh, tough looking half orc, big old mutton chops, um, and kind of more human style hair. But the kind of grayish green skin and the tusks of the half orc, and he comes walking in. He is equipped for travel. He's got nice chainmail, um, a shield on his back, big battle axe slung on a on a hook kind of on his shoulder and a pack that he kind of walks in and tosses towards a booth a, a full booth on the opposite side of where you guys are there's like six humans just kind of hanging out there throws the pack on the table and and mutters get out and they kind of look for a second and kind of look back at Tien and she's like mm-hmm and so the humans kind of stand up and shuffle off to a new table. And then the half-orc kind of plunks his butt back down and, and nods to Turg, uh, the halfling, and says, Get... Give me my usual. And then he sits back like he owns the goddamn place. Just takes it all in. Uh, and he's actually at a, a little table. But, but maybe... 10 feet away from Dave Tillman and looks right at him just kind of and suddenly kind of notices the turtle clocks that you're a turtle which is still somewhat rare in these parts and goes huh. what the hell are you looking at hey man why why the attitude just having a drink <laughs> Well, having a drink sounds good. We'll take another one, Tien. And so she she goes and grabs another drink, two uh, two of them, and starts walking over, plunks one down in front of uh, the half orc, and kind of goes to put the other one in. He motions to your table, and she clunks it down on the table uh, next to Dave. Uh, Dave, do an insight check. All right. Inside. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, you can see her kind of like tentatively putting it down with almost like an unspoken warning. And then she turns and starts walking back to, out, like, out of the way, <laughs> back towards the front. Um, she calls back over her shoulder. All right, Garrick. I'll get you a meal. No trouble, no trouble. Are you staying? He calls her. That depends if I like the company. He kind of takes his big old chug off of his drink. <sighs> so, Dave, do you drink it? I appreciate it, friend. I'm still nursing my drink right now. Tell you what. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Thanks for the offer. He, he kind of just... Don't drink. Okay. He, he's 
He's most of the way through his cup in about two sips, and he looks back over and just totally ignores everything you just said. And then turns over to Turg and is like, So what's the sound of the wind, Turg? And and the little halfling calls back, Say, say. And, and, uh, Garrick just kind of chugs his drink and looks around and, and just essentially pretends that he owns the place. Anything anybody want to do? I kind of sign to Gex, like, hmm, Garrick? That Garrick? It is. I think he, I think he mentioned, yeah, okay, mentioned that, mm -hmm. uh, he's the leader of this, this outfit, Harbingers of Boone. That's the one. And I just kind of said, okay. Well, just to just actually look at him for real now and see if I do recognize him. Oh, yeah, you finally notice fun. all of this. You just look, huh? <laughs> And when, uh, when Rook gets your attention, you now finally yeah. notice all this going down. Yeah, Garrick. Yeah, that's him. Looks like him. That's him. He's uh, he's their leader, right? Yeah. So that's who uh, Harnisa has been running with recently. Yeah, you look around, having just noticed that some new people are in, and you don't see you don't see her around right now. Yeah. But that doesn't surprise me. She's not the kind of person to uh, enjoy being seen in public. If I understand correctly, she she can. She can work the charm as well as she can work a blade. Hmm. But she doesn't appear to be here right now. Yeah, I guess she just more picks and chooses when she yeah. Yeah. wants to be in groups. Yeah, well, I, yeah, what are you thinking? You want to uh, approach? I'm gonna, I want to sit back and see what I'm getting into first. He seems yeah. kind of spicy. Yeah. yeah, I'm in no rush. A little bit of patient observation might be wise. All yeah. right. Can I get you both I'm to do... sit, sit my drink and just uh, see how things go insight... before I make any intro? Absolutely. Insight or perception? perception. Both of you. Or all of you. All the same. <laughs> Five. Oh. Yeah. Twenty-one. Twenty-four. Damn, Ooh. that's a crit. Damn. Uh, good job, Garo. Uh, all right, so twenty-one, twenty-four. You both pick up. Uh, again, Gex, you are just like, I'm gonna have uh, the second drink for Rook arrives, and you pound that back. So you're already just kind of a little, a little feeling good. You got a payday. Your life is good. Um, meanwhile, Rook and especially Dave. Uh, pick up on a couple of things. The first thing is that um, that little halfling is creepy as f um, it Like, there's just something about how still he is. And then he'll move suddenly and be like, oh god! Um, so there's definitely something weird about that guy. And his relationship with that dog is probably very unhealthy. Like, um, he pour, he takes a drink and pours the entire drink into a bowl, puts it down, and the dog just starts drinking. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, they just there's something off about it. And then uh, Garrick is just kind of taken in the place. And you pick up these subtle things just to, over the next like half hour or so um, of you drinking and trying to stay low. Maybe not even that long, like maybe even 15 minutes. Um, Tien comes in, and it's it's not as overt as the classic, like, smack on the butt of the waitress, like, that level. But you just get the impression that Garrick is just prodding and poking at anyone within reach. And he's kind of, um, he's just kind of calling people out, giving people nicknames, um, just kind of just taking up all the air in the, in the whole room. You've seen this kind of grandstanding before. Uh, he he's either spoiling for a fight or maybe 
trying to, I don't know, he, with their 20, you can tell he's waiting for somebody uh, and just kind of getting a bit bored as time goes on. Hey, big man, you, you didn't get any love when you were a kid, did you? Uh, so he's just been, uh, like, just shoulder poking a guy who's near him, just like, tch, tch, give me that bread. And then Dave pipes up, he's like, you didn't get any love. And he just goes, still. You gonna... And then he turns and looks at you, Dave, he's like, you're gonna give me some love, boy? Hey, man, I love everybody. I'm just saying with your attitude right now. <laughs> you don't need to... You don't need to go and bother innocent folk just to get a rise out of people. That's not kind, man. Oh, no, me and him? We're all buddies. And he grabs the guy, puts him in a, a loose headlock, and just comes walking over, just dragging this poor looking like... Ah, ah, yeah, we're poor buddies! This poor human, um, who's like almost half his size, uh, kind of drags him over towards the table, uh, kind of shoves him into a chair, and the guy kind of half falls. He's like, sit down. And he grabs another stool and sits backwards, facing directly towards Dave. <clears throat> so, we go way back. But you, I don't know. Just... Looks like to me, friend, that you just need to chill the fuck out. He reaches over and grabs that drink that you didn't finish. Mm -hmm. Go right for it, my friend. I'm going to get you to roll a persuasion check. Oh, dear God. Oh, 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 no. So you rolled a four. <laughs> yep. And your final result was a one. It's not, it's not a four. So Garrick's <laughs> holding the drink like, like this, and he's just clunked it on the table. And he looks you up and down for a few seconds. You in the mood for soup? He turns to the human who's like, Uh... Sure, sure, sure. I fancy me some turtle soup. <laughs> and he's laughing like this is the funniest joke ever told and the human's like <laughs> it's funny it's funny what do you do Dave dude I think you need a nap and I cast sleep okay <laughs> Uh, go oh. ahead and roll your d4s. Yeah, okay, let's, uh... What is that? 5d... Oh, 5d8s. Oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Uh, let's do that. And I'll... 19. Alright, now it's gonna take a little bit of careful positioning, but you're going to be able to get that side of the table, um... You can't just hit it on one person, though. It's a 20-foot sphere. So you're going to get, um, potentially, uh, Garrick. You'll get this other human guy uh, and another table that's probably about eight feet behind them with about three people sitting at it. Uh, and after that, there's a it kind of diminishing Hold returns. Hold on a sec. Hold on. It says creatures within 20 feet that I choose within the range that are affected. So it's not Really? I yep. didn't know it was you choose. Wow. I've been doing sleep wrong. All right. Who right, would you on, like on, to on, put hold, to sleep? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose. Okay. Right. Never mind. Right. You are correct. You are correct. Okay. okay. So you he's yeah. within that radius for sure. And it goes, uh, 
from the lowest hit points up. So, uh, fortunately for you, these these are just little, little, you know, and, oh my goodness, it's a bunch of NPCs. Um, so, <laughs> you just hear, thump, 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 as the three people at the far side of the table just down. Just basically one hit point each, no big deal. Boom, boom, boom. The human next to you is like, <laughs> and just slouches in his chair. Uh, so you're down by four hit points. So that leaves 15 left to be absorbed by Garrick. And he's holding the drink, and he's just like, <laughs> <sighs> and his breath is awful, and he yawns right in, like, not even three feet from you, just glaring at you. <sighs> you a little tired there, big boy? Um, one other point of, of measure. This is a verbal, somatic, and material. So you, you've sprinkled, uh, what is it, rose petals, sand, a cricket? What do you, which, what do, you do this with? Um, fine sand. Focus. Fine sand, all right. Oh, you can do it with your focus as well. So that's totally fine. Uh, whatever you use for a holy symbol, for example. Um, actually, you're Twilight, so it makes sense that he's feeling pretty sleepy. Um, but there is a, a song, like a, a lullaby-style song, maybe, to this. Uh, so want to give us a little sample uh, as the verbal component? A fucking minus three charisma? I didn't say it sounded good. Oop, I'm on the on the thingy now. My camera's got all done messed up. Mr. Sandman, <laughs> give me a drink. Da, 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 da. <laughs> That's great. That's, that's it. Awesome. All right, so um, it doesn't, sadly, it does not put him to sleep. But... Um, <laughs> what is going on? I don't. I'm sorry, my camera's got all messed. Um, but it so it doesn't put him to sleep, but it does make him yawn heavily, and he kind of he was laughing, and his laughter kind of falls off. <laughs> and he then notices what's going on around him, and all the ta all the people behind him that have fallen asleep. And he's just like, Did you just sing me a lullaby? Did you not like it? I fucking hate lullabies and he's gonna swing at your head go ahead and roll initiative I'm gonna give myself an advantage on initiative that's fair or how, how hold on that doesn't sound right though I guess we all yeah. be rolling initiative or just them uh, you might as well all roll initiative everybody rolls initiative so let's we'll see yeah. where it goes but it'll let us know whether we're um whether we're gonna be all uh with basic order of things all right good good thing i rolled a advantage because i got either not one which is zero or Ooh. 17 all right that that is better all right let me just grab this because i gotta grab your characters roll 20 that of course takes a few minutes to get ready yeah, what am I doing? There we go. Nope, that's not the button. That's the button. All right. So we got 19. Oh, no, sorry. We got 17. What else we got? 14. I rolled a 14. Oh, so two 14s and a 17. Nice. All right. So let me just drag us to a place just in case we want a visual. No reason. No reason. <clears throat> And I'm not sure if it's visual, visible to you yet. 
Is it? Mm, now it is. I got oh, wait, a black screen. It? No, it is not. There we go. Now we visible go. to you? Yep. All right. Uh, I got a spotlight that I can move around. Oh, you can't see the rest of it? No. All right. Uh, let me see if I can fix that. Do do ah. do do do. All right. Dynamic lighting, Pauls. Save. There we go. There we go. All right, Gordon. Gex, you are over in the booth down at this bottom side here. Tillman, um, ah, don't move that. Don't move that. That's a map. Okay, there we go. Tillman, you were sitting at a little table right about here. And of okay. course. So how big's the half orc? Um, I mean, he's medium sized. Technically, he's a big dude. Well, I'm about six foot and four hundred and fifty pounds, so yeah, he's he's actually a little bigger than you. So he's he I would consider him to be um, he's probably about s approaching seven feet. So he's got a good All foot right. on you, and it's mostly muscle. Like he is a he's a beast. And I'm just going to take that and just size it up some. So he was sitting across from you with his back to the others right right there. And uh, so just imagine. Actually, let's set this at this table because there's a table. Why not use the table? So you're on opposite sides of the table. Um, and let's say, Gordon and Gex, you were at the other booth over here just so you weren't in range of that spell. All right. So, coming up first, um, it's actually, since he initiated, it will be, even no matter what he rolls, he's going to go, uh, okay, 13, okay. So, coming up first, um, you get the idea that something's going on, but he does try to take a swing at you there, uh, uh, Tillman. So, he's going to take right. just a bare fist, like, hey, I don't like lullabies. And he just takes his swing. Um, that's my watch, sorry. All right, let's dive in. So uh, he takes his swing at you and does not do particularly well. Uh, I think that's going to be about a 15 to hit. Nope. All right, so he, he tries to clock you with the mug across, and, uh, and you pull your head down and uh, get out of the way. All right, coming up next. Um, all right, coming up next would be uh, you, actually. What do you want to do, Tillman? I'm going to get up. I'm Absolutely. grabbing my halberd. Oh. And I am going to use the butt end of the halberd. And try and aim for his nuts. All right. Oh. You don't like a bully. Look at that. All right. Um, so make your roll. Fuck take. Oof, that's a nat one. There's no no joy there. Sorry, pal. So you just take it, and he's just spoiling for a fight. He's been hoping for this. You come swinging, and he, he doesn't actually duck. He was sitting backwards on the chair, so he just grabs it, and swings up and counter swings it and just parries the uh, the shaft of your halberd as it comes swinging towards his head. Um, all right, coming up next, uh, that would be um, that's actually him again, uh, which is one second, one second. Uh, I'm just still trying to learn your names. What's your Rook? Okay, uh, so Rook, you're on deck, but it is Garrick again. So. He's okay. like, <laughs> ah, so soup's on the menu. And he, he's going to try to, um, actually, he he's just going to try to tackle you. So you're going to, it's a grapple effect. And he's going to, um, actually, you know what? He's going to try to clock you again with the mug. 
and probably misses. Uh, 12 is going to miss you, right? Um, so, yep. unfortunately, he doesn't get to do what he wanted as you kind of squir- s- circling around the table as he's swinging wildly <laughs> and kind of poking at you with the chair as well. All right, coming up next, Rook. Is she just going to mutter under my breath? And I'm just going to say, Angel, what do I do? Just like, it, and, I, and just for a moment, just wondering if he, if he whispers back anything or any of the others. It's not my fight, mate. See what happens. So, and I, I think from what you said, what he said, whispered like not our fight, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to um, hide. I'm going to get up, and I'm just going to basically, you know, I, I kind of give a look to Gex. I'm like a shrug, and I'm just going to like get up from the table, so I'm not boxed in. Yeah. And so as I go out, um, huh, I'm going to try to find a place where I'm not easily seen by anybody. Like maybe it's, I'm actually just going to go do, 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 like even underneath the stairs a bit. Sure. Absolutely. And just hide. So these guys have been circling a little bit around each other. So by the time you make your, your turn, he's yep. kind of got his back to you there. So you just kind of over the corner. And just kind of stand in the corner in the shadow. Slink off and, and hide. Yep. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll stealth check, please. Okie dokie. Ooh, 11. Not, a, not great for you, but not too bad. Um, I'm it, going to just use my last uh, image... Knowing that, like, of just like slinking through, I, I get some images in my mind, maybe from Angel, just like slinking through as we've done a couple heists together, and I'm just gonna roll. Not, not great. Well, done. If anything, you you get this image of Angel kind of laughing. <laughs> Old times, man. Old times. Thick. Should have stuck to just singing. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Coming up next, um, the dog comes, just starts snarling, but also catches in his throat and goes <laughs> and vomits all this ale on the on the next to the floor on the on the bar. Just kind of over here. Um, I don't have them in there yet, but we'll put them in. All right, well, there we go. Creepy little gnome, or uh, halfling, and I don't have a dog, so I'll just put this thing. All right, there we go. I'll shrink it down a little. There you go. Nope, wrong button. All right, so the dog just starts yakking right in the spot where you'd walk to go back to the kitchen, like right on the floor there, just vomiting wildly. Um, All right, coming up next, uh, Gex, do you want to do anything? Uh, I think, no, at this point, I'm just going to observe. Absolutely. Just kind of put your feet up on the far side and just finish your finish your stew. Um, yeah. In all the hubbub, it's one of those classic scenes where, like, Garex moves across and, like, bumps a few tables and a few people are like, whoa! And the, it's, it's general mayhem is breaking out. There are more people involved than what are on the map, just so you know. But these are the main people. Mm-hmm. All right. Um... You can hear, just in the in the background, you can hear Tien being like, Hey, hey, wait, hey, hey! We do not want any trouble here. Stop, stop! Um, alright. And then, uh, we are down to the little creepy halfling. Kind of hops up in this, like, he's been sitting. And then just goes, and just scuttles forward. And rushing towards Tillman... Uh, barely covers the distance, but just covers the distance, and sticks out his quarterstaff and tries to poke you with it. Um, so he's going to try to uh, melee uh, hit you, and we'll see what happens th- from there, okay? Uh, what? Out of curiosity, what's your AC? 17. 
All right, let's see. Uh, does a... He's not great at it. Uh, does a 14 hit you? No, it wouldn't. Nope. All right, so he does not make contact. Um, and you can... S he swings down at you, but in uh, trying to poke you. But as you're sidestepping, you can... S uh, he pokes the little the little human who was sitting next to you that then fell asleep as you step out of the way and the staff hits him in his shoulder and there's a little pulse of grayish light just boom. and you see this the the cloth where his shoulder was starts to dent inwards and just very quickly uh, all of a sudden his clothing just starts to be hollowed out and just hang super loose on that side of his body and very quickly <laughs> starts twitching and then uh, the his skin becomes super tight and then gray and then cracks and bursts open and inside instead of blood you see this grayish kind of ash just kind of pouring out and and almost wafting into the air before it hits the ground. Some of it is enough to hit the ground and pool as this grayish ash amongst all the clothes as this necrotic pulse just <laughs> dissolves him and you see this stretch rot like very desiccated skeleton just <laughs> fall onto the table uh, and then off the table and onto the floor uh, as that poor commoner is dead. And, and uh, Turg, the real little half thing, is like, hey, 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 feed one, feed one, feed one to the mother. All right, top of the order. Tillman, what do you want to do? Dude, man, what the fuck's wrong with you? That just swing to the halfling. All right, make your roll for the half-o. Uh, the halfling, yeah. Uh, yeah, halfling. Oof. That's a 15. Um, normally, he probably would be harder to hit than this. However, he's not using his shield right now. So, it's still kind of leaning by the by the dog in the bar. So, he, it does make contact. Alright, I'm not using the blunt end this time. Nice. Damn, that is 10 hit points. 10 hit points down. Nice. All right. And you have Ooh. 20 straight? Damn. That is that is a serious cleric he got there. All right. The uh, halfling just... <laughs> and goes flying with the force of the shot. Just yeet. Just poo. Uh, and flies halfway back towards the bar and lands in a, in a crumpled heap and sits up with this nasty gash in his across his torso um, and sits up. You can see some armor underneath, but he, he's definitely bleeding badly, but he's still alive. All right. Um, and he snarls at you with this. Actually, he snarls, and then the dog snarls in almost like a counter, like... Um, and they almost sound the same. Uh, and, and then next up, uh, is Garrick's turn. Okay, so he rushes at you and tries to, this time, straight up just hit you again uh, and maybe get a, a grapple on it as well. Okay, that's going to hit. That's a 19. Uh, so, 19 brings it to a total of 25. Does 25 hit yep. your AC? It All right. does. All right. Now he's still just using an improvised weapon of the the mug. Uh, so that's going to be six points of damage to you. As this just this mug just shatters across the side of your back of your like right back here because you were looking away and just clocks you one. He immediately follows up uh, with. Hold on. Gotta get my dice. Oh, it's nice to roll real dice. Steve's right about that. Um, he immediately follows up 
with a grapple attempt. Uh, that's going to be... Uh, so you can roll athletics or acrobatics to try and get out of the way. Woo! Nice roll. Got a 20. Uh, so that is... Oh! Your 20 beats his 17. So he just tries to get you in that headlock with the free hand, and uh, you just pull your head down and out of the way again. Uh, so yeah, he just you're a slipper little turtle, man. Nice. All right, coming up next. Strength, Carl. Good job. Yeah. Hey man, it bounced off the fucking five charisma. <laughs> yeah. All right. After Garrick, Rook. I'm kind of looking at this like hiding and um, just listening to the to the voices to guide me because like it's not necessarily really my fight and if anything I, I you know I'm looking for someone a member of, of this guy Garrick's crew yeah so I'm not really sure what what to do at this point beyond That's just right. stay staying in yeah, stay out of the bar fight enjoy the show so you're sitting there cross armed. And you look up next to you, and, and right next to you is Angel. Uh, what does he look like? He is a half-elf. Uh, suave. Uh, kind of like a ladies' man. Really great performer. Coolest kid in the block. And we grew up together in the orphanage. So like, I tend to see and hear him, Kat, and sometimes Delilah and Rowan. All right. So he's sitting there and he's laughing. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's like old time. Look at that. Look at that. He's pulled his head in. Do you smell something? And I just kind of like, hmm? Do a perception check. Okay. Twenty-one. You smell smoke, and not like good smoke. It seems to be coming from the back room. You mean the kitchen? Yeah, the kitchen. And it—you can actually see a little bit of smoke just coming through the doorway, just at the top there. Uh, nobody else seems to have picked up on it. You're like, wait a second. I'm gonna. And you, at I'm gonna just check now, it out. Like, like, you can then hear uh, some, uh, 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 just some some voices raised in slight unhappiness, but not quite a shout, just kind of a reactionary yelp from the back. Ah, uh, I'm gonna make my way to the back then. All right, so I'm gonna get you to do an acrobatics check, because otherwise you gotta go right past the dog. Well, let me ask you. Do you want to go up around the corner up that way, uh, past the bar, through the little walkway into the kitchen? Or do you want to scoot over the stairs, which are to your immediate right, uh, and then hop the bar and then go behind the bar? I am going to scoot over the stairs and hop the bar in a very acrobatic fashion. Well, then I'm going to need you to roll some acrobatics. All right, then. Twenty, nice. Just over the top. You gra you could even grab a drink on the way past. There is a little. Bottle. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a little cartwheel, grab yep. a drink, little sip. Yep. Notice I don't really care for at drinking, but I'm just doing it out of, out of almost re reflex, and I'm just yeah. Gonna and you, you land behind the bar, kind of crouch down, and you look over, and Angel's right. He's sitting at the bar, looks over, and he's like, "Hey, man, give me, give me, give me that." And I just kind of leave it there you for him. You pass it I just back continue. out for him. And you just okay. look over. And, and as you scoot towards the kitchen, you just look back. And he's, he's trying to... Trying to, you know. All right, you yeah. you keep running. Uh, crouch run. And you go right past Tien, who is now ducked behind the bar. But I think she's distracted at this moment. Hasn't heard you. So hasn't noticed you. Uh, and you see her just mutter, swearing away in Elvish. God damn it. If it's not one thing, it's another. 
as I pass her, by the way, since I'm here, I, I yell back in, in, in Elvish, smoke. What? Like smoke in the kitchen. What are you doing? What? And then she looks as you go past her, and uh, you get to the door. I say hun in Elvish. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the smoke door. Smoke in the kitchen, hun. You get to the door and spin, and you look in. And um, you see the back door uh, where the, the cook had been hanging out. At this point, he's starting to come back towards you. And he, he kind of sees your silhouette in the door and kind of clocks that there's somebody there. And you see him carrying like a big rolling pin. And he's kind of walking out to help back up Tian out there. Um, doesn't seem to be paying much attention. And the smoke is kind of above his head. He's kind of short for a human. And so he doesn't seem to have noticed this at all. Uh, meanwhile, the, you look to the right, and there's the little human, 14-year-old uh, human, sitting there. Just um, His back is now towards the stove, and there's no fire on the stove. But on the counter in the corner, kind of near where there's this window, um, you see uh, it, it looks like there was a pot or something with oil or something or rags. It's hard to tell because it's all engulfed and flamed, and it's starting to spread. It, it's probably a good, like, foot size flame right now but it's spreading visibly quickly it's catching on some of the curtains uh, spreading across the wooden counter and, uh, and against the back wall which is the this is the wall that would be directly up against the bar side of things on the opposite side of that I don't have the, the kitchen part here but you can get the idea and okay. the um, sorry uh, the kitchen's opposite towards the uh, where the fire is is in the far corner, and the the human is hanging out in the in this closest corner. The little human so boy who's like the, looking at the fire, fire and being there? like, "Pardon?" Is like where I'm pointing is the fire there? Uh, I don't think I saw where you pinged. No, the fire, the fire's further back. Uh, I feel like I, sh like it would be towards. I guess it's a really big kitchen. <laughs> Okay, over there, happening. way back there. Yeah. And there's okay. hallways and an bonus, office and I can stuff. bonus so action dash down. towards it? Yeah, yeah, you totally could. Uh, you're not. Okay. You're going to run out of movement in a, in a few seconds as you start dashing towards it uh, around the surprised cook. All right, coming yeah, so back. I'll just I'll bonus action yeah. dash as close as I can. Oh, uh, with that, you can actually get real close, like pretty much right up to it. Just like, uh, start looking around. Take it all in, but yeah. you don't have time for an okay. action. Yeah. Okay. All right. Coming up next. Um, the dog. It was snarling as you went into the kitchen, but it was fully paying attention to Krell, uh, to um, to Tillman. And it goes running forward and tries to bite him. So it's going to... Uh, oh, that is a natural one. So it goes running forward and snaps at him, missing badly. Um... And in, and then turns and starts running back towards the little halfling. Hold on. Uh, I'll yep. get an opportunity attack. You do get an opportunity attack. Go for it. Uh, actually, that would that would hit the dog. So roll your damage. Six. Nice. Nice. All right. Uh, that is going to be enough. All right. So, as you see this dog running away, you hit it with your halibur. Do you want the blunt end or the sharp pointy end? No, at this point, it's the sharp. <laughs> That's fair. All right, so let's say uh, four of that overflowed. So, as you hit this dog, <laughs> and the kind of the hips kind of swing out as it's running away, as you hit the you hit the dog, um, and actually Garrick's like you hit the dog, <sighs> and um, and as the dog kind of spins, it morphs and extends. And for a second, you're like, "Whoa, you hit that hard!" And then you see like black fur give way to like a black cloak, as in its place there is no longer a dog, um, there is a dwarf. Uh, kind of scrambling on all fours towards the ha uh, halfling. Uh, and it kind of slams onto his side and then uh, goes and stands up and uh, 
and it's it doesn't get an action or anything, but it turns around and looks at you, and you see this beastly looking dwarf. Like it makes all dwarves look very civilized comparatively, like nasty long, super long beard and like unkempt. Hair is just wild. Clothes are a mishmash of different hides. Um, and you're just looking at this almost as wide as he is tall. And he's just looking at you and just like, you ain't the dog. <sighs> and he's still got yeah. these nasty canines. The teeth. What I mean. kind of fucked up place is this? <laughs> All right. Um, coming up next. Grex, do you want to do anything? It's been an interesting bat uh, like bar fight. Yeah, kind of, but I'm still kind of deciding why I should get involved. Yeah, you don't have to if you don't want to. You can watch what's whatever you want to watch, man. I mean, I kind of want to connect with Garrick, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to interfere. All right. Uh, no, uh, I'm just going to continue to watch. Keep on drinking. Nice. All right. Um, after a few... Oh, well, I, wait, no. Hang on, I take that yeah. back. Is there anybody close to me? Oh, yeah, there's a couple of humans, like, trying to scramble. A few of them are making their way towards the door. I'll be like, uh, uh, three, three silvers on the turtle. What do you and, think? and it's in this booth right next to you. You see this, this woman sitting there. She's got, like, really super tight, curly brown hair. She's a little bit shorter. Not a dwarf or anything, but, you know, on the way. Um, and she's actually... Screw it. She's a dwarf. She's she looks up at you and is like, "Deal." Wait, four <laughs> against the turtle. Oh, I'm betting three silvers. He comes out on top. <laughs> All right, I'll take your money. All right. Um, she leans over. She's like, "Name's Vanessa, by the way." Oh, Vanessa. Yeah, my name's, uh, Ferguson. All right. Coming up next, the halfling stands up, dusts himself off, and, like, you can see he's got this seeping wound, but he, he almost seems amused by that. And he looks over at, um, at the turtle and says, Yo, good heavy. Fun to play with. And um, he is going to cast... Uh, let's go with Ray of Enfeeblement. So I need you to do a save. Let me just look up which kind. I think it's a... I think it's a... Actually, I don't know which kind. Of, let me look that up. I've, I've never done this before. Uh, Ray of Enfeeble... What? No, go away. Away, computer. Okay, Raven Feeblement. Um, strength. Oh. oh, it's a spell attack. Okay, cool. So I'll roll and see if he hits you. Uh, does 14 hit your AC? Nope. Oh, so the ray just <laughs> goes over and uh, smacks against this this um, little torch that's just in behind, a little lantern behind you. And the lantern just, it's still lit, but it's just flickering with a super dim, weak light. Um, and so he missed, and, and Turk's like, <laughs> Alright, coming up next, uh, Tillman, you're back at the top. Alright, I'm gonna... Pesky humans uh... indeed. Pesky human. Yes... Just see something. I'm just gonna hit, uh, hit Garrick, uh, yeah, Garrick there. All right, make your roll. As you're just like, <laughs> oh, I imagine with your thing. Yep. There's no blunt, then no more. Twenty-five to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Make your damage roll, sir. Ooh. Fuck's sakes. 
All right, but you actually make contact, I think, with for the first time, actually. Yeah. So you just clobber him uh, with with the blade of your your halberd, and he just kind of flinches. Take it, kind of glances down his side, just a downward chop, and it glances off his shoulder and scratches along his side and digs pretty good into kind of his thigh as he's taking this kind of combat stance, um, and he's gonna just grin his teeth teeth his tusks just like ah. he starts to slobber a little bit just like ah, this one's got some fight he's still still looking pretty healthy hale and healthy all right uh, he's gonna turn around um metal it is and he whips up this battle axe and just literally throws it into the air and then your eyes track up and he grabs the handle as it comes back down and uses the momentum to try to chop you. Oh, that's not going to be great. A nine does not hit you as he's trying to be too fancy. And he just, just the way it is, as he did his move, he ended up kind of on this side of you. Uh, uh, with you kind of just trying to hem you in with his allies. So he kind of scooted right. around you. And as he Side swings ball. down, you sidestep. Sorry, go ahead. Do I get an opportunity to attack if he moves? Well, he doesn't leave your um, your melee range. Okay. He just kind of scoots around you to try and like set up a flank. But as you sidestep, he just chops into the table and just halves the table. The table is <laughs> into two neat halves when he's done with it. All right. Uh, coming up next, Rook. Um, you've got a cloak. Uh, there, there is a big pot of stew. Uh, if you want it in the room, um, and a couple of scared-looking humans, because when you've drawn their attention to it, they're both like, <gasps> and they're both just kind of standing there, uh, agog. What do you want to so, do? So I'm in the room. Yep. What's on fire? So in the kitchen, um, in the corner, near one of the windows, uh, along one of the counters, it looks like a prep area. It looks yep. like there was some kind of small cask or something and it's been split open and there's a blackish liquid that is burning very a lot that i'm i'm a wordsmith <laughs> um yeah it's burning a bunch uh and it looks like some kind of oil uh and it's starting to catch uh, everything else in the area so it's not like something i could just like on a table kick out the window i'd if not, I then mean, I'll, you I'll... could certainly try to scoop up. Like the cask is the most on fire, uh, yeah. and and it's cracked and seeping more oil. And it, as it drips, it's like <laughs> got that kind of, and it's still burning, a thickish kind of sticky oil. Um, and then the counter itself is also on fire, but the main thing is the cask, and it is right at the base of this window that appears to be open, although the curtains are on fire. Um, or I could just take the soup and try to use the soup to kind of... Either one. Do you want to yeet it out the window or try the soup? I'm gonna, like... Wait, the issue with yeeting it out the window is it'll... It'll make whatever's outside catch fire, I think. Yeah. You don't, you haven't been out back, so you're not sure what's back there. Not sure what's out back there, so... If it's far enough from the, the house, it might be better. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Hard to tell. So I'm going to use the soup to kind of like, as basically liquid to kind of put as much out as possible. All right. I'm going to get you to do an, I'm going to say, I'll let you do either an, um, like a, it's almost like an improvised weapon attack as you grab this soup and try to, um, yeah. so you'll be rolling an attack at disadvantage or you could roll an athletics check to just try to punk it on top. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do an attack at disadvantage. All right. Okay. Uh, but do I get my proficiency bonus, or is it just a disadvantage? Uh, unfortunately, it's it's just your dex. No proficiency. You are not proficient in soup, sir. But it's, uh, okay, so... First roll. 
Nice. 16. <laughs> All right. 16. Not too bad. So you grab this pot and just start rushing it over and just stop short and let the momentum do the work as this sloshing stew soup thing goes onto the counter. Um, and it does manage to put out the worst of the fire, but the oil from the cask is still burning. Even, even though it's tamped down a little, it's still burning. So you've stopped it from spreading beyond, and in fact, you've put out but everything I, but I could except put the pot, the cask. emptied pot, on top of it now, right? Sure thing. Now another thing happens as soon as you grab that that really hot soup pot, you're going to be taking some fire damage on your hands. Um, yeah. So you take two points of fire damage just to the palms of your okay. hands. They're sizzling on this nice hot pot. What's okay, your strength, okay. by the way? Uh, my strength is thirteen. Okay, so you have enough. You don't have to check or anything. If it was super low, yeah. I'd, I'd make you roll, but 13 is enough to just he heave a pot. Um, so yeah, can I just you can drop the empty pot on top of sure. it? Sure, just... you can just drop it on like top a... and stand Ooh, back. Like, and... Uh... Yeah. Like... All right, that's your turn. Nicely done. All right, it looks like the fire is under control. After seeing this, the old cook just kind of gets startled out of his out of his froze, uh, his frozen state and just turns and starts <laughs> bellowing into the room oh, i'm not gonna yell this in my house because my neighbors would be very upset with me but he starts yelling fire fire and um the uh a few seconds later you hear a voice from the other down the hall in the other room what what the that damn fire 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 and she starts yelling she starts yelling to the rest of the room Shit, I've got a fire. <laughs> okay. And uh so that's your turn. Coming up next. Alright. The dwarf starts stalking towards Tillman with this incredibly enthusiastic gleam in his eye. Uh you can see why he was very canine like. He, even in his full return state, he is pretty feral looking and his teeth slowly elongate even more and his fingernails are like and he's gonna try to hit you there um there Carl or Tillman all right okay hold on that's that's without any mods so let me just figure out what the mod is uh that's gonna be a 17 I have a 17 okay so he matches so you are going to get hit by this effect. Uh, let me just pull it up real quick, like uh, Prime oh. Savagery. Um, so it does hit, and on a hit, you're going to take a certain amount of damage. Okay, uh, that's going to be the attack for wins. Uh, yep, meets beats. Okay. Sorry, man. Um. Yep. So. So uh, that's going to be eight points of slashing damage, uh, and uh, I think that's it, actually. Yeah. Yep. So you take eight points of slashing damage as he just takes a chunk out of your shoulder. There, your shell is probably a bit too hard, but your shoulder he gets. How you doing? I am down to seven hit points. Woof. All right. And he's like, <laughs> All right. Um, coming up next, Grex. Gex, it looks like you're about to lose your bet. Says Vanessa. Yeah, maybe. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any way I can throw it. <laughs> throw the fight. <laughs> I mean, there is a couple of stools and chairs that if you kick it, it might get behind a guy at a bad time. You could you could make it difficult terrain, basically. Yeah, just trying to do that without this woman realizing I'm doing it. So, you hop up from your booth, which was over here, and turn around with a flourish and plunk your butt down next, like, opposite her. Yeah. And as you walk by, you kick a chair hard. 
to make yeah, it kind of backwards. I'll do like a little pirouette, swing the leg, sit down and go. So, uh, does this happen here often? Is this kind of like the local spot to, you know, put a few coin down on a uh, friendly brawl? Ah, uh, most of the time, uh, Tien keeps a clean house. She's out a few favors, but you know, stuff happens at the buck. Nobody's gonna <laughs> stop that. Um, what do I gotta so roll to see? I'm gonna if get I you to do. Like... I'm gonna get you yeah. to do either acrobatics or a ranged attack. Uh, I feel like it's more acrobatics. Sure. Not that I really care, but. Um, yeah, it's just easier for me to roll acrobatics. If Eight. it's high enough, I, it'll be more than. Uh, like, if it's high enough, you get to make it difficult terrain. If it's even higher, it could be m more complicating to these people's lives. What'd you do? Uh, I got an eight. Okay, so you managed to kick it, and instead the chair goes... But it missed this section, uh, where you were trying to put it kind of behind where Garrick is likely to go. And instead it hits the edge of this kind of communal fireplace area and goes boonk, into the edge of the fire and, and the, like kind of tips over and the top of it is now resting in the fire but you don't happen to notice that because your back is turned and you plunk your butt down and then you turn yeah. to see your handiwork you're like oh, oh i successfully lit a stool on fire perfect yeah. yeah exactly it's just smoldering right now but you know it's in that spot Try, okay. Trying to work out how to make that an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Not All getting right. there yet. Coming up next, the little halfling goes stalking forward. And uh, he's going to... Hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, he's going to just try to do another spell on you there. Um, can I get you to do a constitution... Oh, sorry. Ranged attack again. That's this guy's downfall. He is kind of awful. Let's see how he does. Ooh, rolled a 19. So the little halfling kind of hops up um, on, a, on a, like, fallen person. One of the sleeping people just stands right on them. Gets a good line of sight on Tillman and goes, As in And some kind of weird, ghastly, nasty language. Um, and you just feel this uh, uh, as this bile rises in the back of your throat. Um, the good news is I don't think it does too much damage. Ooh. So that's going to be six points of damage. <laughs> Are you down to one health? Yep. Okay. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oof. Turtle man, you are not well. That's a nine. Okay, you fail, so you are considered poisoned. Ouch. This is not going that well for our dear friend Dave. You're losing your bar fight. Uh, mind you, it's three on one. Okay, bottom of the order. A couple things happen. Tien starts screaming. And again, I can't do this because I'm at home, but... Fire! Fire! You, but you jackasses cut it off! And everybody, give me a hand! God damn it! And I will get free drinks! For the rest of the year, to whoever the hell helps me put out this damn fire. That seems to get a... Um, I don't know if that piques your attention, but you... Did you hear that? I couldn't tell if the... Oh, I heard it. Okay, cool. Everybody kind of pauses for a second. Another thing happens. The front door opens again. And in walks, like... High-heeled boots. Um leather outfit long kind of um uh, dangling tail and 
a little short cape, and this beautiful, just gorgeous woman walks in. Um, and as you kind of trail upwards, as the camera pans up, you can see very soft, short fur, a little tuft around the neck, almost like a little little mane, um, but just a little tuft. And then out into this beautiful cat-like head. Uh, it is a tabaxi woman. And she walks in with these golden slits of eyes. Um, really, really, like, everything you would imagine of a woman crossed with a cat. Um, and she walks in, and she smiles, and, like, half of the people that Tillman is fighting all stop, and some of them look at, at uh, Tien, who's screaming over by the bar, and then they look back at the at the door when this uh, tabaxi woman says, My, my, my. Looks like I've been missing all the fun. And Garrick's like, About to finish up, love. No, I don't want your scraps. What did he do? And it's like, Tillman's just like, <laughs> He was breathing my air. Hmm, darling. What did we talk about? Don't shit where you eat. Is this where you eat? How is the food, anyway? She actually turns and says that to Vanessa and Gex. Eh, it's staying down for the moment. Her knees All right. up. And she goes kind of sauntering past and looks around as these three start circling around Tillman, just ready for that pouncing blow. Um, but it doesn't seem to be coming. They all seem to be waiting. And uh, Garrick kind of steps back, kind of disengaging. Um, it is technically going to be Tillman's turn. Tillman, what do you want to do? There's a brief pause as she joins. I'm popping my fucking shell. Is it actually <laughs> <laughs> boop, boop, boop. The halibur clang, 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 as you just bloop, bloop, into your shell and turtle up on the ground. All right, and you can still kind of make out like where footfalls are, and Garrick is just looming over you, and he kind of—he's still not sure. So he actually spends his action to disengage and step back, and then turns around and grabs. Um, Hernessa, this tabaxi woman, and just pulls her in, like half lifting her up, and she puts a, a clawed finger on his lip as he goes in for kind of a rough kiss, and then she rakes a claw down his lips, drawing blood, and she's like, not now. And he's he just grins and licks his lips and drops her back, and then looks over his shoulder at the other two who are now busy flanking the turtle shell and they're kicking it but not like there's more like a prodding kick to see is he dead um but they're not actively trying to like murder it you anymore they're tillman all right um um hello there's still a fucking fire and then they kind of shake their heads and like eh. Your business. And then, Gre uh, um, what's his damn name? There's too many names in this game. Garrick and uh, Hernessa start walking towards the door. The other two do one more kick against the shell, not doing any damage. And then they start walking out as well. Um, the smoke is just pouring out of the kitchen, even though the fire's been extinguished mostly. Um, it's still pretty bad back there. Gex. Tillman, what do you want to do? I want to get her niece's attention. Um, so she's, I'll... sure, you could just she walk. She's walking right past you. You could just grab her hand as she walks by. Well, I'm not going to touch her. That would be rude. Yeah, I'd I'd say, uh, pardon me, her niece. I have something for you. She stops, and Garrick continues a few more steps. Uh, and scoops up a drink off the table and pours it into his mouth. Um, she pauses and then 
slowly turns back and looks looks at you over her shoulder and she kind of eyes you. I'm listening. Uh, it's 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 in this box. Let me just uh, go back to the table I was at and grab the box. She watches you walk by, just kind of and you pick up the box. The other uh, and typing the what other... it is. Oh, did you figure out what it was? Yeah. Okay, nice. All right, so you pull pull out this small statue. It's it's very small in your oversized hand, and mm -hmm. it's wrapped in cloth. And you turn around and offer it to her, and she's just kind of takes this in. And for a few seconds, it's all quiet, and uh, the other three mercenaries make it to the door and pause and look back. What's the hold up? Uh, Garrick says, and Hernisa just looks at the cloth, holds out her hand. You put it in her hand? Yeah. She uses a claw to try to unwrap it and looks at you. Hmm. I was hoping I could get your attention enough to have a conversation. You've got my attention. Is there somewhere maybe less public we might have a chit-chat? She wraps it up again, puts it in, in a, a pocket or a satchel that she's carrying. Looks around at the smoke and the wrecked bar and like the dead dude and the, all the unconscious people and the turtle all tucked in. She's like, she makes a little motion in Thieves Can't. You can read it immediately. And she's like, are you affiliated? Yeah, of course. You can find us at the Swan. In fact, you might be staying elsewhere. I wouldn't recommend this shithole. It seems to be on fire. And she Can't turns. Imagine anyone who would. She turns and starts walking away, and that the the four of them, gonna gather up. The last one out is the dwarf who just turns back and gives a and just looks towards the tor the turtle and then you hear a whistle from outside and he kind of flinches and then follows the rest and the door is open and this smoke is just going through um at this point um at this point rook comes back out of the kitchen um uh kind of cradling your hands uh the fire is out but um uh, Tien is still kind of standing there trying to gather up buckets or um, she's she's calling to the rest of the room what's that lot of good any of you bastards done? what? It's and I look at her in the eye yeah. and I say and I say, and I, yeah, and I say in Elvish just like clear like I put it out she kind of pauses for a second well <sighs> At least someone around here has some brains. Oh, I knew he could do it. And then she switches to Elvish, and and she's. A... Thank you. Fun. Just smile, just like it. You go walking out, pick up the bottle that um, Angel's been busy. Just he's sitting at the at the bar where you Drink left it. him. And he's just looking longingly at this bottle, and you walk by and reach over his shoulder, and grab it. Yeah, and I just kind of like reach over the shoulder, grab it, take a, take a swig. Don't really like. Eh. Yeah, while right. he's doing that, I'm gonna just lean over to the Vanessa woman and go, "So, which one of the two of them is still in the bar?" That's a technicality. I mean, he's literally, I think he might even be dead. I just keep staring at her, <laughs> smiling. Pay up, big man. He's still here. It's called King of the Hill. Still on the hill. He doesn't Other look very kingly right now. 
You see a hand rise up from the shell. <laughs> Bonus action to pop back up. <laughs> they seem to have gone. It's I'm getting flashbacks to bullies in high school. M me popping out of... <laughs> um, all right. Um, I'll just kind of like wave her off and like go talk to... All right, you see Rook kind of approaching the center there. Uh, back towards you, and you look over, and this this turtle is still alive. Um, and Tien walks up to him and kind of nudges him. Are you alive? You okay? Uh, oh, and what kind of people do you attract here? Hmm. All kinds, apparently. All kinds. You're gonna cause any more trouble? I wasn't the one causing trouble. He was roughing up the others. Yeah. yeah. He does that sometimes. He's an old family friend. Oh, God. What happened to that guy? And she points over to the dead human laying in the... Your friend... Tom, what up? Hey, hey, you! You! Big guy! She calls over to Gex. Can I help you? Look, bodies are bad for business. I'll find out who his family was. We'll give him what we can. Will you return the body? I'll, I'll drag it out back for you. But, uh, you know... No, no. I'll... Look, I'll pay you. In food. Lodging. Ale. Whatever you want. A small amount. But his body should go home. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> Ain't doing that. Uh, yeah, definitely don't enjoy a lot on the hands unless I put it there myself. Suit yourself. But I, exactly, will suit myself. Appreciate the stew, though. She turns back and calls the cook and starts talking with the cook about getting the body out of here and back uh, quietly. You overhear her mention the word like, we have to do this quietly, we have enough trouble. Yeah. And I'll just motion to, to Rook, like I'll sign to him, like, oh, we, we got a meet. We have a meeting. And a sign back, did she come when I left? Yeah, I talked to her. We have an invite. Right about now, three guards walk in just as the cook is dragging um, the body back into the kitchen area, and the rest of the people, pretty much all, most people have cleared out, um, and you guys are just gathering up your stuff to get going, and Tillman, you're just kind of crawling your way back up to your old chair, and the, there's, it's actually the four guards that you saw before their gex come walking in but this time they have a different person with them um kind of a, a blue kind of tunic uh nice overcoat kind of buttons brass buttons um looking kind of like a fancy guy um and he walks in and he calls out uh and he's like tian what what is going on here? And you hear Tien mutter. Oh god, it's not, not now. As you guys are about to go. And, and now you can push past the guards if you want to and make your exit. If you want their Gex and Gordon. Uh, Ge I shouldn't shouldn't name that Gordon, sorry. Um, uh, yeah. Rook. Yeah, we can. Uh, I'm going to 
try the whole stealthing past them. They are um, right in the entrance, though. So, like... Cool. Yeah. No, maybe and, not just slide on, into a giant. Come on, you could do I it. I think we're, we're going to slide into a booth and just be, yeah. like, nursing yeah. our drinks. We're, like, we're doing the Han Solo, Chewbacca, Whoop. Cantina situation. Whoop. Yeah, so like you the sit there with your back. You just <laughs> grab the nearest seat and uh, pick up somebody else's ale and pretend like That's Vanessa. Yeah. Uh, actually, you, you duck into the same booth as this Vanessa dwarf lady who's also still there. And she just kind of takes in and she's like, hmm. Um, and Tillman, what are you going to do? I'm looking around. I'm like, yeah gonna drink my ale all right so you're kind of wobbly on your feet and um at this point uh tn comes walking over to you tillman and kind of steers you by the shoulders and as she calls out talking to um the guards and this this kind of more fancy looking fellow um and she's kind of steering T tillman and she kind of glances around sees the booth where the rest of you guys are and kind of steers him towards you're the only people other than staff in the room, and she's steering you away from the kitchen where the cook is. You just see the feet disappear on the corner of the body they just dragged. Um, and uh, she steers Tillman towards and gives you a shove into the booth, and Rook, you sc scoot over just, just in time to have this guy not land on you. And she plunks an ale down in front of you and almost shoves your head into the ale to be like, drink. Um, and then as she does this, she turns towards the, um, the, the fancy looking fellow. She's like, ah, what is it now, Cranston? You're always welcome here. I'm bringing you news. Maybe good news for you or the patrons. Oh, doesn't look like you've got that many. I'll look after me. I thought you might be here asking for another donation. Not today. Well, I guess this is worth something. Um, do you have a board? And she nod she nods towards like the far side of the wall, just by the um by the door there. She nods towards that. And he turns around and holds up a long uh, opens a scroll and and it's a flyer of some kind of some kind of announcement. Um I'm. Who knows their letters here? Who reads? I do. Everybody. I right. don't know if I know how to read. Uh, what's your intelligence? Uh, intelligence, fourteen. Oh yeah, you can read any languages you know with that. Right. So you can get the idea of like, um cash that most of the font is kind of too hard to read from this distance but it says um something or other you can't quite make out wanted then in big letters the gauntlet and then it says at the bottom cash prize and provost and then the rest is kind of lost in the text uh that from this distance he walks over takes a this very fancy looking pin puts it on the board, turns around, and the guards are kind of like poking away. They've spread out around the room. A couple of them walk past the four of you um, and like give your look because you're the only ones who haven't left. There's also three sleeping guys there um, and, uh, the, and a whole bunch of wrecked furniture and stuff. Uh, and they just kind of do a slow circle around, help themselves to another drink, and you can see um, Rook, you can see Angel sitting at the bar watching these guys just walk right past him. He just kind of looks nonchalant and, ooh. um, and, uh, he kind of just gives you a look and, and motions towards the board. Look at the board. And you can see where they put this cash prize, the gauntlet. The gauntlet. And Cranston turns around and, and looks back at Tien. That's it for tonight. Oh, oh. Sorry, wrong voice. <laughs> That's it for tonight. You have yourself a fruitful 
business endeavor. You might want to clean up. I'll see you next week. Of course. Thank you. He takes a long look around the room. Then turns on his heel and leaves. And shortly after that, the guards kind of leave with him. I'm going to actually, when they leave, get up and walk towards the, the board and read it. Like, what is sure. this? Um, It looks like a flyer or poster for a competition. It says, um, Provost Post's opening soon. Adventurers, mercenaries, able-bodied daredevils, wanted. Cash prize, the king's appreciation, and possible provost opening. Inquire uh, within um, uh, Tel Telborn Keep. Born keep, huh? It's for for basically to for this gauntlet competition. Yeah. And then there's a, a day which is approximately like basically three days from now. Um, it says. Oh, it says there's a there's a thousand gold pot. Hmm. Very hmm. Vanessa leans over the table and looks over at Tillman and is like, Hey. Hey, Turtle Boy. You okay? Uh, I've been better, but uh, I'll be okay. Damn. You can take a punch. And she looks over at Gex. And then back at the turtle. Would you say you won that fight? Still standing, am I? I'm just getting like the South Park. I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> uh, she's like, <laughs> I'm surrounded by a bunch of stubborn assholes. <laughs> I need my money. She turns to Gex. I mean, you can't you can't say he lost. He's still here. Uh, you want to call it a wash? I'll let you get away with that if that's the way you want to play. But I, I do not accept that this turtle person lost that fight. Look, that guy's dead. I suppose. Well, never a dull night at. Pardon. So what kind of gamblers are there in this town? I just got to know where to look. Mm. And she says that at exactly the same time as Angel. You just got to know where to look. <laughs> All right. Was this going to help me get you guys out? Is that just kind of whip muttered to myself when I think about that? I'm just like. And you you kind of mutter that, but he answers from across the bar, and he's kind of leaning back at the bar, and he's like, "Money opens doors. What can I say? Never a bad thing." And there's something about the smell of it. Mm mm mm. Something. I don't know. Kind of reminds me of the smell of home. An itch. Nah. Fine. I'll see what I can do. And I'm just like, I kind of look at it like, all right. And I kind of walk back to, to Gex and the others. Kind of nod at the turtle, like, mm, tough fight, man, tough fight. And uh, I look at Gex and say, like, you know, I just kind of sign, like, when you want to meet him tomorrow? Yeah, whatever. I mean,. Uh, Arnisa mentioned that uh, they'll be at um, where did the they swamp. say they would be? 
The swan. The swan. The swan. And kind of indicated that if uh, we needed a place to... Well, if I needed a place to stay, that'd be it. We got my old place. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so... I, what's with the uh, poster over there? You, are you interested in taking on the old gauntlet? Or do you think there's some connection between that and what they've been getting into? I don't know if there's a connection, but that's a thousand gold. It's kind of hard to pass up. I was always pretty quick, but I'm even quicker now. Yeah, well, that's good. I ain't getting any faster. I always like to sample the local traditions. I'll turn over and just kind of, kind of, kind of like a little smile, like, oh, okay. At <laughs> this point, Tien comes walking over with a tray full of drinks, plunks them down on the table, picks up a stool, and then realizes it's burning, and then <laughs> chucks it down with a yelp, and she's just like, This is the worst night. <sighs> I'm closing up. If you're going, go. If you need a room. And she points to the stairs. But I owe you this much at least. And she looks at Rook with a nod. And so there's a tray full tonight. of drinks. Hmm? Guess I'm staying here tonight. Right? Because she said there's a room upstairs. So like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll She's, take that. Uh, yep. There's rooms upstairs for all of you if you want. Yeah, I'll take a room upstairs. Okay, I may take you up on that, but I got somewhere I gotta go first. She she gives a nod. She drinks her drink down in one long slow pull. I gotta go clean up. And she turns around and starts walking back and moving some chairs around. The night is yours. What do you want to do? All right. I just kind of look at um, Gex and just kind of sign, like, just let me know when you want to meet him. I'll, well, I'll owe you one. Her, her niece. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm curious to see what she has to say. So the sooner the better, I think. Oh, you want to go now? Yeah, why well, wait? Okay. We'll go now and then I'll come back and crash. Yeah, it's just a conversation. That's it. I'm, I kind of look at the total. I'm not looking for a fight. I just need some info. And when you look back at the total, you can see Angel kind of sitting in between him um, uh, where you were sitting before you slipped out. And a Angel's just kind of looking at him. And, and he's, think of he's reaching for a also, drink on the table and being like, can't get it. <sighs> can't get it. I'm probably like thinking Cat is also probably just crouched nearby, just looking curiously at him because she's very inquisitive. Yeah, yeah. And like, just in oh, a few cool. different tables around here, uh, like there's this little pan around the room of all these empty chairs, broken tables and all this stuff. And you just see this little flicker of like a small crowd, a uh, uh, handful of people here and there as you take it all in and and this lingering smoke in the air and uh, and Vanessa finishes her drink at the table she puts it down and, and with a belt yeah. well it's never a dull night at the, the old buck good night you crazy sons of bitches and she gets like she, like, oh. and she gets up and starts walking upstairs. I kind of look at the t the the total. I'm like, you know, I don't like bullies either, but I got some business with that crew. And I kind of like shrug at him. 
You do what you have to do, man. If you need some help for the gauntlet later, just you know where to find me. I'll be crying. Oh, you, you're interested in that? Like I said, man, I'm always interested in local traditions. The gold's a bonus. All right. Well, I mean, let me. Uh, I'll find out what it is. And you seem like a tough guy. You took quite a few hits, so. Yeah, like maybe, maybe it's kind of in a somewhat non-committal way, but like, hmm, that could be interesting. And uh, I guess I'm gonna take off with Gex. All right, so you guys gather up your stuff, make your way out into the night, and there's leaving behind a bit of a an odd scenario, and um, and I think. Even though we're wrapping a bit early, I think we're going to pause there as you head out into the night. <laughs> All right. All right, thanks very much, guys. We're going to we're gonna stop session one, uh, episode one, rather. Uh, I do, uh, either for you guys or for the internet, we do need a title for tonight's game. So I want you to brainstorm what you think tonight's title might be. Um, and, uh, sorry, I usually do a break, but we kind of just powered on through. Sorry. I'll try right, going forward. I'll, I'll plan a break because, you know, but, uh, thanks guys. That was fun. I haven't done this in a while. I wasn't sure where that was going to go. You know, like the player in me wants to help, but I'm like, uh, the character is like, Oh, Hey man. It's, that's the way it goes. That's, that's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think the character's like, I need to talk to that crew. I, I need to talk to them. I was this close to raging, though. This close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I'm so happy. Uh, yeah. Gotta start with a bar, uh, bar brawl. And I'm... Yeah, yep, that was interesting. That was interesting. The fire, that was weird. Anyway, we'll see where it all goes. All right, does yeah. anybody... Actually, I mean, we could take variable Eddie. Thanks for chiming in in chat. You made the suggestion earlier, of just or the comment, pesky humans. I don't know if that applies as the title, but <laughs> actually, I, you're... I would almost gonna say like drinking games or something like that. Nice, yeah. Although I think that was Beer. the last one. Beers, brawls, and boxes. Oh, nice. Even better. Beers, Beers brawls, and boxes. Beers, brawls, and boxes. What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> Nice. All right. I nice. think that's that's the winner. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. We're hoping to make this, I hope, a weekly game if you guys are inter interested. Um, yep. yeah. And I I will mix and match with some shadow runs occasionally, too. But uh, that might not be on a Wednesday. We might mess around with that. All right. right well, there's, uh, I have no idea how it's going to connect. Actually, I do kind of do. Uh, how it's going to connect to the session one half. But uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, Steve, it's been a long heard... time. Sorry, go ahead. I don't know if you heard what I said earlier, but uh, I think the city you were, you were looking for was uh, Taz Pharrell. Taz Pharrell. That's what I wanted. Taz. Well, I was thinking Tardsylvania. No. Well, I had the ta, ta part. Taz Pharrell. Yes, the name of the city is Taz Pharrell. And it's a port city. Uh, in different pieces, at least this iteration of it. But like like he said, there are ruins and old um, uh, places to explore all throughout the city and then further out in the wilderness too. Um, so yeah, there's lots of places it can go from here. All right. Well, thanks, oh, guys. A asking, for a, asking for a character is you going to get a long rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> um, I suppose it depends on what happens with Gex and Rook's next game. Um, we'll, I think we'll, 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 we'll put a pin in that and we'll see. All right. So I think that's it for us. Uh, stick around for the Creative Commons notes at the end for all the music credits that have been scrolling at the bottom of the doodly doo. Um, and we'll see everybody back here. Hopefully same time, same channel next week. And thanks very much to Variable Eddie and Darcy for jumping in. And of course, uh, to the players, Gordon, Steven, and uh, and Carl. It was a lot of fun. Pleasure, pleasure. All right, awesome. thanks, guys. It was a brawl!